And I'm so thankful he's always speaking and his word is living. Amen. It's active. It's powerful. It has a power to change us, fill us. Amen. Encourage us. It's just so important that we can include the Holy Spirit. What do you want me to say to me today? Do you ever just do that? And just, are you boggled like I am that you can just open the word and he's speaking to you, answering your questions. He knows exactly your thoughts before you think them. Amen. And he includes us, which is so wonderful. He includes us. We can ask him whatever we want, whatever we want to know about. And I just want to encourage you to do that, to do that lots. Okay. So this was, okay. So Clark, that must be your brother. Cause right. Is that your brother? You can tell. Well, at first I was thinking Clark's changed a little bit here. And then it's like, okay, there's Clark. There's my brother Daryl and my other brother Daryl. <laughs> Welcome. Good. It's wonderful to see family resemblance. But there again, in the spirit realm, do you ever meet people that are the same? And it could be in a negative way. They have the same negative spirit. Val and I were talking about that a little bit last night, how some of family members that, right, might treat you the same. And when you compare notes, you're thinking, it's the same spirit because they act exactly the same. And, but in the good way as well, when we have the Holy Spirit, you can meet people in a different country and they can have a totally different body type than you, speak a different language, you can't understand them, and yet you're just going, it's the same Holy Spirit. It's just so wonderful. Amen. So we all have the same spirit. We all get to drink out of the same grace fountain. I like how my Passion Bible calls it a grace fountain where we can drink grace. How many here are thankful for the grace of God? Amen. And we're going to be talking about that a little bit this morning here. So we are in a series in the book of Acts because I believe that God is about to act and he's about to do some of the same things, amen, that we're going to recognize and yet they'll have a, a different flavor because not everybody's exactly the same and not our stories are exactly the same, but he does work same, same. And so we can expect some things and faith comes to expect these things. Faith comes from hearing and hearing the word. So I don't know about you, but when I read about miracles and I read things in the Word, there, the Holy Ghost rises up in me and saying, I want some of that same, same. Amen? Do you get like that? I want some same of that. So we can, that's supposed to be our marker of what we're to expect from the Holy Ghost. And even beyond, he said uh, he would do exceeding and abundantly above all you could ask or think or even imagine, so if you've seen it in the Word, you're going, well, God, if you could do that, you could do this, because it's the same power that raised Christ from the dead, that quickens my body, amen? And, and so we grab hold of that, and we, and we personalize it, and we make it ours. And that, that pleases the Lord, because he said, without faith, it's impossible. So if you don't act on the Word, faith without works, without b putting action to it, is dead. It just doesn't do anything. Amen. And so we need to find that application and we need to find it personally for us. What is Holy Spirit saying to me as an individual this morning? What is he saying collectively to Dorchester, Dorchester Christian Family Center? What is he saying to maybe your family unit? What does God want to do? And, and I believe he's coming this morning in a very real, tangible way to make some adjustments He's always making adjustments, amen? We want to adjust ourselves to reach full stature in Christ. That's, that's to be our goal. Uh, the fact that God even put that in the Word, it's like, honestly, God, how do you expect me to live up to that? But it's only in the Holy Ghost, and we can. So without further ado, I'm just going to go where we left off. Um, just for people that uh, haven't been here for a while or... Are visiting, I'll just uh, go back over the whole story. So this is going in uh, the book of Acts chapter 9, and we find a young man named Saul breathing out murderous threats to the church, to the, the brand new born again church. 
and he's dragging off men and women and families, taking them to prison. And um, while he's on the road, he gets, he gets a, a, an assignment, and he's to gather all these Christians and wreak havoc, get them from every area where they have, may have been scattered and bring them into to, to prison. And as he's going, a bright light shines on him, and he hears a voice. And he says, who are you, Lord? And he says, I am Jesus, whom you are persecuting. And um, so he says, now get up and go into the city, and you'll be told what to do. And then the men that stood there with Saul, they were speechless. Obviously, they were incredibly affected by what was happening as well. Uh, but he's, Saul is blind, and they have to lead him by the way and take him. And meanwhile, in Damascus, we looked at this last week, verse 10, there was a, a disciple named Ananias, and God called to him in a vision while he was praying. And he said to him, the Lord told him, go to the house of Judas on Straight Street and ask for a man from Tarsus named Saul, for he is praying. And in a vision, he's seen a man named Ananias come and place his hands on him. So he's seen you come and lay his hands on you. He's going to recognize you when you come to that house. Talk about specifics. God sends him to a specific location for a specific a pur purpose and to a person. And he says, Ananias talks back to the Lord. And he says, Lord, I've heard about this guy many reports about this man and all the harm that he's done to your holy people. And he's come here with authority from the chief priests to arrest all who call on his name. But the Lord said to Ananias, go, this man is my chosen instrument to proclaim the name to the Gentiles and their kings, to the people of Israel, and I'll show him how much he must suffer for my name. That's as far as we got last week. Now picking up in verse 17, then Ananias went to the house, he entered it, placing his hands on Saul, he said, Brother Saul, the Lord Jesus, who appeared to you on the road as you were coming here, has sent me so that you may see again and be filled with the Holy Spirit. Immediately, something like scales fell from Saul's eyes and he could see again. He got up and was baptized, and after taking some food, he regained their strength. So that's, we're just going to take those few verses this morning. Verse 17 to uh, 20, 19, that's as far as we're going. So first point, what I want to share is the importance of important details. Amen, God is a God of detail. His yoke is easy, his burden's light, but he gives specific instructions for specific and specific details. And what we see here is a pattern throughout God's word, where God will give many people their assignment, and uh, sometimes he gives that little bit of thought process to this, which he does for Saul and Ananias. There are three days where Saul gets to stay blind, be led by uh, by the hand. He can't see a single thing. He's totally blind, and he's in a different atmosphere. He has just met Jesus, had face-to-face -face encounter with the living Jesus, got some amazing, shocking, talk about paradigm shift. Uh, his whole world is turned upside down. So often we see this, um, this bit of gap, this grace, uh, a little bit of time to digest what we're to do. We also see this pattern of details with Nehemiah, who hears from the Lord to go rebuild the walls, and he, he doesn't tell anybody. He says, I didn't tell anybody, any officials or anything, but I crept through the wall at night, and I didn't tell anybody till he kind of got a handle on what the Lord had said for him to do. And so we see this grace period that the Lord gives very often when there's an assignment. The same reading this morning about Josiah reforming, rebuilding the temple, getting rid of idolatry, cleansing the land. There are specific assignments. And so what does God want you to hear that about? Is because God has detail. He has specific instructions. And we 
we need to, first of all, get a handle on that. What exactly is God saying to us to do? And I believe we've had a grace period. We've come through one season, and we are entering another season. We're finishing up our building in that, I don't know if you noticed, but our driveway and parking lot is being prepared for paving. We're waiting for a rain uh, so it could pack it down nice, and then it's going to be paved. And then this one phase of our assignment, this building, our children's wing, and the parking lot is like okay ready set we're ready set to go and we're about to enter even as we're entering a new year Jewish year on the calendar it's a new era and I find myself now it's time to hear again now it's time uh, to cleanse the land like Josiah did like Nehemiah it's time to rebuild the walls it's time to take our focus from what we're doing here and put it out there now what amen and so we need to hear and we're we're uh God's into details and he tells he tells Ananias this is what you're to do now I've already done my part I've already uh, given him a vision, and he's seen a man named Ananias lay hands, so he knows how it's going to come down, so he's going to recognize when you get here and you say you're Ananias, I've already told him that you're coming. And I've already told him your name, and I've already shown him that you're going to lay hands on him, and I've already told him exactly what he's going to do. He's going to lay hands on you and say, receive your sight, and you're going to be healed. And then we see, and then he goes through all the things. Then he gets baptized, and he gets healed physically. And so what God showed me in the spirit realm, has confirmed it in many ways, is like, it's like a combination lock. And I don't know about you, do you remember having one of these in high school, and you had to use one of these to open your locker? And you had to do it just right. A few this way, and a few that way, and a few this way. And if you didn't quite get it, and you could yank it all you want, but it wouldn't open up, and you go, no, shoot, must have did something wrong. So you start over again, and you, and you try to get it exactly, and then click, it opens. Right? And so we need to get it right. God is a God of details, important details. And we got to hear, and I... I'm not the only one that needs to hear. There needs to be a combination. Amen? Just like Ananias needed to hear and Saul needed to hear. Everybody needed to do their part. But what's been so beautiful, what I believe God is saying and has done and why things have gone so smoothly in this church is we've had such beautiful unity in our board that whatever Holy Ghost has said, it just clicks. Yep. We're going to do that. Yep, I believe we could do that. Hey, we're doing this by faith, and we're just going to keep it going. Let's go to the children's wing. Click. And it's like, okay, the money keeps coming in. What's next? Parking lot. It's like, okay, so Holy Spirit, what is Holy Spirit saying now? Amen. And so uh, God does his part, and we do our part. And then the kingdom of God, like we sang so beautifully this morning, song of cho these choices of songs are just so beautiful. Thank you, Lord, that God is talking, and we can't leave out important details, or it's not going to open. This is not going to open. And so I'm at a place, I hope you're at a place where it's like, okay, we're ready, right? God gets us to a place, even prepares us in every which way, so that we're hungry, we're ready. Okay, God, we're eager to see what is God going to do next? How is he going to bring in the harvest? What is our assignment? What are our goals? And apparently, you men at breakfast uh, yesterday heard all about that. Apparently, that's what um, Frank was sharing about what our personal goals are and what our vision or our, uh, for a church is done. So... Here we see another important aspect is God deals with everything. He deals with the spirit, man. He cares about 
the physical. He heals him of his blindness. He cares about his salvation and baptism and getting filled with the Holy Spirit. He said, he, he says, okay, uh, I'm here. And he sent me so that you could see again. There's a physical healing and be filled with the Holy Spirit. So it's... Uh, Apparently, with the communion, with the Seder, when the people take uh, celebrate Passover, there's four cups. And it's to celebrate, which we had last Sunday, um, we celebrated communion. And God is celebrating, and we're thanking God, because he made provision for our bodies. Amen? By his stripes we're healed. He provided for our spirits that we'd be born again and filled with the Holy Spirit. He healed our, so he heals his eyes and he does his spiritual work and he does a relational work. We see here with Ananias, Ananias is saying, hey man, I've heard about this dude, he is not good. He's got authority and we, he's wreaking havoc all over the Christian church and Apparently, Ananias, the, the name means grace. And God is sending him because he says, you've tasted of the grace of God. God's riches at Christ's expense. We did nothing to deserve our salvation. And yet so many times we, have a, we put our hand up and saying, yeah, that was for me, but this person's real, like you don't know how bad they are and how many horrible things they did. And so... God also, one of the cups is for relational. And the Bible says, if any man, if you have anything against your brother or sister, you're to, you're to leave your gift at the altar, get it right. Get right, because Jesus paid a price for that. Otherwise, it says many of you are sick and weak. Amen? So you don't want to do that. You, Jesus made provision for us relationally as well. And to be filled with the Holy Spirit. And so, I believe what God is saying to us individually is important, but it's also important collectively as a church. What's missing in the church world? Where is the grace of God? And people, denominations, leave out important details. They might stop at salvation, and they might have gotten a great revelation that Jesus paid a price on the cross, and whoever believes in him would not perish, but would have everlasting life, and they've got that down pat. But they've made up their own man-made rules when it comes to baptism, when it's to be. We've heard incredible stories, even just yesterday. It's like, where did they come up with that? You got to be baptized before you're married, but it's not when you believe, and it doesn't, it just is all kinds of man made rules. And instead of dunking people like it really means to immerse them, to bury them, to dunk them, and have them come up uh, empowered by the Holy Ghost, oh, we'll just do this again. They change when and who gets baptized, and they, and they change it all up, and something's not working. Amen. And then when it comes to be filled with the Holy Spirit. Not only heal his eyes. Uh, okay, we'll talk about that. Churches take out healing. And again, there's a fight of faith over the healing movement. Is to say, does Jesus still heal? What does his word say? Because we've got to line up with the word. If it's not going to line up, it's not going to open up. God has done his part. Amen. But... What about our part? What is our part? Jesus says, your work is to, do, is to believe. That's our work. Believe. Believe it. That means you're going to not just head knowledge, but you're going to be a doer of the word. Amen? Not just believing. And so, uh, again, healing, to contend for it, is to say, God, your word says, and so I'm going to continue to pray. I'm not going to stop until my body lines up or these situations line up because they got to line up with the Word of God. Either God is true, it says God is true, and, and He's not a liar. Amen? Amen. And then, how about baptism of the Holy Spirit? 
and we're going to look at a few passages where the, the natural man can't receive or believe the things of the Spirit because they are spiritually discerned and you're not going to get it with your head. Why should we baptize a little bit of water? Why should we have communion? Why should we do this or do that? It's because he said so. And so obedience. So I'm just kind of talking to myself, encouraging myself, and hopefully you, that we just want to do this God's way. Amen. There are not, it's not about us. It's not about me. It's about their spiritual, their soul's at stake. Amen. And revivalists have found the key before. Amen. And there comes a point where all of a sudden the Lord says, okay, now yank it. And it's working. Now, the question for us is when we're asked to do something that might be outside of the box, it's like, are we going to say yes? Saul was turned to Paul, but he still had to say yes, and he still had to put action to all of this. This was just preparatory. Just like building this church is like, it was just preparatory. This wasn't the end result. We just started. We didn't just end once the parking lot gets filled. Uh, gets paved. It's like, what next? What does God have for us to do? It's all about the harvest. Amen. And we're going to have to do some, I can guarantee you, some strange things, some things that are out of the box. Were they out of the box for Saul? Did God turn his world upside down or what? Amen. And what is he going to tell him? He says, and I'll show him what he must suffer for my name. Because I haven't even told him this. I just told him, he's been through three years of, three days of sitting in this. Now he's going to get healed. He's going to get baptized. He's going to get filled with the Holy Ghost. All these things are going to happen to him. Amen. In fulfillment. And then, and then I'm going to show him what he must suffer. I'm going to show him what's after this. How many know that Paul, Paul's teaching and Paul's effect, when you study his missionary journeys... His first, second, and third is like, honestly, he couldn't just hop on a plane and be back in a few hours. Like what he went through, shipwreck and beatings and, and all kinds of opposition, even right off the start, they're trying to kill him and put him in, they have to put him in a basket and he has to escape. But what came out of all of that was incredible harvest. Amen. God used the very one that was fighting the hardest against the church to evangelize and to be the greatest mouthpiece there ever was. How awesome is God? Amen. But details matter. The important details, they matter. And so please pray. Please pray because I'm feeling again, it's sort of like, uh, like being in travail again and, until Christ be formed because I'm desperate. For revival, I am desperate to see God pour out His Spirit on this thirsty land, and God has been giving me some uh, some uh, dreams about uh, signing over of papers. Cromerty, who's a lawyer in town, I didn't know he was a lawyer, uh, but in this dream he came because I had to sign some legal papers, and I believe that as we're taking ground, it's like I'm taking it. I'm saying, in Jesus' mighty name, it has been handed over. I've signed the legal papers. It is now not yours anymore. We're taking it from the enemy. And we have to learn how to do that. How, how do we possess the land? Saul only knew how to do what he had done up to this point. Uh, uh, but again, he was going to be doing something that was totally out of his comfort zone, totally out of his experience, right? Just way out there. And... We can't understand things like, if this is going over your head, sorry, but it's possessing. It's talking about possessing. Possessing the city gates, all those books I've read, I've read all those things about revivals, and it's like, okay, we're at the cusp of something, and God's about to do something supernatural again. And it's the beginning of a new year, a new era in the, as far as God's calendar goes, and I believe he's setting people up. And he's asking, will you be one of the ones? Will you, be, will you be a participant? Funny how you mentioned even a coach. Will you, are you ready to play this game? Are you up to the game? 
Amen. And when you're part of the team, you don't get to just do what you want to do. You got to show up on time. Amen. And there's there's positions for us to play, and I just want to throw out there. It's like, are you up to it? Are you, you know what you're signing in for? Uh, because it's going to be wonderful. Amen. And God is going to do his part. And so I want to share, Lisa didn't know that I had planned to get this little thing about important details. And what she saw in the spirit, I said, did I tell you what God, my uh, little visual here this morning was she saw two dials one was a small dial and then there was a big dial and I said that's like the wheel within the wheel Ezekiel saw a wheel within the wheel it's our part we got to be faithful to do our part then the supernatural part where God does what only God can do because we can't save souls but we can prepare the ground so to speak in the spiritual realm so I need everyone to pray pray for your neighbors pray for our neighborhood pray for this geographical area because God has already given it to us but we need to enforce it we need to speak it we need to use the sword of our spirit with the word coming out of our mouth what has God said that he's gonna do and we sang about that didn't we this morning so Next verse, next point is immediately, the word immediately. So he said, the Lord Jesus who appeared to you on the road while you were coming here has sent me so that you could see again and be filled with the Holy Spirit. So, after, so this is what happened. Immediately, something like scales fell from Saul's eyes. So I just want to talk about that word immediately. So if you get all the four areas of your life back in divine order, immediately this thing opens. And that's what I believe God is going to do. There are suddenlies in the spirit. There is all of a sudden when things line up, when things line up, it opens immediately. Amen. So... There is just incredible, we see through Jesus' ministry over and over again. If you want to look at Mark chapter 2, just crack your Bible open there. You'll find that word immediately, immediately, immediately. When Jesus goes in, he calls divine order. So I need to, just before I go on to that, God had given me an acrostic for the, for the name Dorchester. Dorchester means a gate to a fortified city. And it's the eastern gate where the glory comes in. And the acrostic is divine order restored, Christ establishing saints to reign eternally. We're just really practicing to bring God's kingdom on the earth as it is in heaven. And when there's divine order in our lives, where there's nothing missing, nothing broken, when we're living balanced lives, spirit, body, soul, spirit, like all of the areas relationally, when there's divine order, we start to see God do the supernatural. We start to see the suddenlies. We start to see immediately. So again, so some faith can be... Uh, built up because faith comes that way I want to just read a few scriptures about Jesus's ministry when these things happened immediately so Jesus put forth his hand in Matthew 8 3 and he touched him the leper and he said be clean and immediately his leprosy was cleansed disappeared and I don't know if you've ever heard or saw or considered what leprosy is, but spiritually, leprosy symbolizes sin. And so immediately, all the leprosy was disappeared. It says in another translation and an account where his skin was like a brand new child, like a tiny child. Do you ever look at a child's skin totally flawless? Like his skin was brand new. And talking about Peter, Peter's on the water, and he begins to sink because he doubts. And immediately Jesus put out his hand and he pulls him up and he says, why did you doubt? Amen. And so we see that account with, with 
Peter, God visits him a few times with it com coming into the, in line with immediately. Um, in Matthew 20, 34, it says, Jesus had compassion on them and he touched their eyes and immediately their eyes received sight and they followed him. Immediately they received sight. And just after we go through these scriptures, we're going to look at what makes up spiritual blindness. Saul was healed of spiritual blindness. He was healed physically, but he was healed deeper, a deeper level. He was healed of spiritual blindness. Amen? And what causes people these days to be spiritually blind? Okay, so hold that thought. In Mark 1, uh, 31, uh, Jesus came to Peter's mother-in-law, you'll recall, that she had a fever, and Jesus took her by the hand and lifted her up, and immediately the fever left her, and she served them. So that's how quickly someone can get healed, amen? And so everywhere Jesus went, he caused divine order to be restored, when people said, and if you've committed any sin, uh, it'll be forgiven. Go and sin no more. And he always did a, a deeper level than just heal people uh, physically. It was also, oh, uh, often, it was to prove a spiritual point, a spiritual healing of leprosy, a spiritual healing of spiritual blindness as well as physical blindness. Amen. And uh, we also see in Mark 2, verse 8, we see some men, they come and bring their friend on a stretcher, and they find the house is full, they can't get in anywhere, so they climb the roof, talk about being desperate, talk about an act of faith, they climb up the roof, they move the, everything out of the way, they let down their friend, and it says, um, Jesus immediately perceived in the spirit that they reasoned within themselves and he said why do you reason these things in your heart to, to prove that the son of man has power to forgive sins he took him by uh he rose up it says in mark 2 12 and immediately he rose and took his bed and went forth from them all so much so that they were amazed and glorified god saying we've never seen anything like this before Again, spiritual lameness as well as physical blindness. And uh, we also see that with a woman uh, with the issue of blood, she touches the fringe of Jesus' garments, which represented prayer. The moment she touched them, Jesus felt the power go out of him. He said immediately he felt the power uh, leave him, and he says, who touched me? And she was healed. Again, not only physically, but the saying the issues in our lives, amen, dry up the moment we bring them to Jesus, the moment we touch Jesus, the moment we say, Jesus, you're the one who ever lives to make intercession for us. And so we see those immediately. And I believe that like the last few revivals that I've lived through, um, it was a suddenly it was for a long time we were hungry and thirsty and crying out and interceding. And then it was like all of a sudden, there it was. Immediately there was a breaking out of the Spirit in a way that kind of had us scratching our heads. Because God does stuff to offend the mind in the natural man cannot perceive the things because they're spiritually discerned. So that, on that note, I want to go to what causes spiritual blindness. Why is this important? Why am I taking you on this journey? Is because we have to have an understanding of how things work in the kingdom. Amen. For them to open up. And they're not difficult. We just have to position ourselves. We have to be like the ones on the dial. It's like, okay, Lord... Physically, every area, relationally, are we good? Yep, got that. Anybody, uh, have I gone to my brother? Have I uh, done what I'm to do relationally, emotionally, spiritually? Am I, am I surrendered? Will I obey the Lord? Am I positioned uh, to obey the Lord, to expect the supernatural? And then the doors will be open. But the blindness, the Lord heals his eyes and scales fall off his eyes. So what's with that? 
I don't know if that makes you wonder, but that got me digging. Because Jesus wants us to have our eyes wide open to understand what he's doing. He said, I don't do anything without revealing it to the prophets. I want to know what he's doing because it's important for us to know what season we're in, right? You make adjustments where you're going, what you're doing, what your plan is according to the season. So many causes for spiritual blindness and we can ask Holy Spirit to maybe speak to us if there might be. First and foremost is Satan. The Bible says Satan has blinded their eyes to keep them from seeing the glorious light of the gospel so that they wouldn't be saved. That's the devil's job. So we got to what do we do with the devil? Well, we resist him firmly. We resist him. We submit ourselves to God. We resist the devil. And what happens to him? He'll flee. Glory to God. So we got that one down. Amen. That's what we do to get rid of the enemy. Now, what else is in the way? Sin, pride, ignorance, following blind guides, caring more about what others think than what God thinks. Those are a few areas that I want to give you a few scriptures on. They will cause you. So sin means missing the mark. So if you don't get it on, if you've got sin in your life, in order to see the kingdom of God work, divine order restored, to see the supernatural, you've got to get sin out of the camp, out of your heart, out of your life. What is sin? It's missing the mark. If you're not loving God with all your heart and all your soul and all your strength and your neighbors, yourself, amen. If you're not loving God, so that's missing the mark. So Holy Spirit's job, he comes to convict. He's going, ah, by the way, you've got to clean up your talk or you got to clean up your attitude or you got to uh, clean up your priorities or whatever and we kind of know when we're off don't we where you go something's not working i got to make an adjustment here um, so that is what sin is pride will blind us like religious pride the um, religious pharisees were offended because Jesus was, in essence, saying they were blind. And they said, are you calling us blind? And he said, well, if you didn't claim that you could see, you wouldn't be guilty of it. But because you claim that you can see, you're blind. So religious pride, where we're set in our ways, and no matter what Jesus did, Jesus says, well, believe just because of the signs then. Believe because of the miracles. But they wouldn't believe because they were the elite. They had the last word on it. Amen. And they were offended in their spiritual pride and blinded their eyes. And um, so the few scriptures on this, the world, in 1 John 14, 17 to 20, says, the world cannot accept him because it neither sees him nor knows him, but you know him for he lives in you. And he, so he lives in you and he will be in you. Amen. So we can see him if we believe in him. And that's what's so wonderful about him. But the world can't see him. Amen? Because they don't know him. Um, then in 1 Corinthians 2, 14, a person without the Spirit cannot accept the things that come from the Spirit of God, but considers them foolishness and cannot understand them because they are discerned only through the Spirit. Now, this is going to be a challenge ahead of time. So if you're on a trip and you're on an adventure and someone says now something that you probably never tasted before or never experienced before, I've never seen before, outside of your experience, it's going to be something outside of you that you're go that's going to cause your head to, you to scratch your head a little. And I just want to take you on a little journey going back when our church was birthed out of the last outpouring of the Spirit. We had, by direction of the Holy Spirit, gone and uh, started a church, got a little warehouse on Calvert Street, and we were just having church with a few people. Now, there weren't very many. And then, but we were praying, praying, praying for revival. 
And God started to give a little drop of rain here and a little drop of rain there by hearing prophecies. Kenneth Copeland, one day in the middle of preaching, he says, and God is about to pour out his spirit like a bonanza map. He's starting and it's going to go from Toronto to, and he didn't, he's, he's, a, he's from the States, but he says, I see a big highway and it's going all the way to Windsor. He was getting names in the spirit and I'm, I remember hearing that and jumping out of my skin saying, yay, that's us. We're smack dab in the middle of the revival fires. And sure enough, so that was a drop. And a few things we started hearing about Toronto Vineyard and God was doing something in Toronto. Yay, it was happening. Okay, God, we started to put our expectors up. And Gil and I went away for some reason and we came back and the church was a little out of order. People started falling out on the floor and there was laughter going on and everything. And I said, okay, God. I ran up the stairs in my bedroom and I said, Holy Spirit, I've been praying revival for a long time. So if this is revival, you've got to show me in your word. And God gave me a scripture and he, the word said, and Jesus was anointed with the oil of gladness above his brethren. I said, well, Lord, if that's your idea of revival, I want it. And he says, okay, you asked for it. And I was like, okay, what's God going to do? And do you know deliverance and healings and salvations and people were bringing kids from wherever to get delivered and set free and it was something supernatural it was an immediately thing it was a God thing somehow all we had to do was our part <laughs> and God did what only he could do amen but it offended many religious people's minds just like the old times when Jesus would heal people and it offended them. How can you forgive sins? Well, I'll show you how I can forgive sins. Pick up your mat and walk. There, that's how easy I can forgive sins. And they'd never seen anything like it. And do you know what? Immediately they went out and they plotted how they're going to kill Jesus. After he just healed somebody who could never walk, could never see and Jesus offended their minds. And so, i just saying that as a preparatory. I'm not trying to recreate anything, because we can't. It didn't work. When God was finished with that, he was finished with that. And we couldn't make the horse live again. Once, you know, you couldn't beat a dead horse. It was like, it was, it, it, God was moving on from there. Amen. So, just to say... When God does something supernatural, ask him, is that you, God? Is that you? Show us, Lord. Show us a sign of what, that you're on the move. And pray, and it will be in the word. That's what's so awesome. I never get anything from God with I say, I want a scripture on that. And there's been times I pressed in, and I wanted six scriptures before I believed that he would send me to Africa because I was sure he had the wrong girl. I don't like spiders and snakes, and that ain't what it takes. I was like, okay, God, you got the wrong person. Send some big, strong man who could go through the jungles. Don't send me. I don't even want to go. So it's like, God, if you want me to go, you're going to have to give me scripture. Okay, another one, another one. Sorry, God, one more after the sixth one. It's like, okay, fine, I'll go to Africa. Amen. So he uses unlikely people and unlikely circumstances. You got to let God be God. You just got to be who you can be. Amen. And he wants you all lined up. He wants your bodies healed. He wants your spirit saying, I surrender. And you know, there's times I sing that song and I don't want to surrender. I have to be really honest. It's like, are you really in for another bout of this? Do you really want to do another lap? Are you in for the game? I just go, I really kind of really talk to my neighbors and they, they tell me they're going to Florida all winter. And I think, maybe we should retire. Our neighbors get, no, you can't. It's like, no, God, don't let me that be okay with me. Make me surrender. Give me a new heart because in my old nature, I don't want to do, I don't want to go to Africa either. I don't want to do things like that. Amen. So it offends my mind. I'm going to be real honest. 
It's not comfortable what God asks you to do. There's all kinds of repercussions in the spirit, but I believe God's about to do the immediate if he can raise a team, amen, to be ready to say, oh God, just fall in this place like we were singing this morning. Just fall in this place. And then the awesome thing is he gets, Saul gets baptized and in integrating all the elements and just like Jesus said, do it now to fulfill all righteousness. Why did Jesus even have to be baptized? Amen? And he said, to fulfill all righteousness. It didn't even make sense to John. He says, why should I baptize you? Like, you're the son of God. This is, right? It just doesn't even make sense. So just to be prepared, I'm anticipating God moving and using ordinary men and women just like you and me, if we'll obey and if we'll say, Lord, I surrender my will, my own desires, because I really just want to live life in comfort and do the things that I like to do. <laughs> but it's like, make me a willing vessel. Amen? So that's, that's that this morning. So we got through a few more verses. We're taking it real slow through this because what's more important than covering a lot of ground is let that settle and ask yourself those important questions. Is to say, okay, and so what part would I play? Well, you can always just start wherever you are, right? I think of when we were born again, just got baptized at the Baptist church. And it was like, okay, so what can I do? Okay, let's sign up for janitor. We could do that. We signed up for janitor duty. Just like John's doing here. It's like he's saying, I find in great delight doing this because when we work heartily as unto the Lord, hallelujah, that's what blesses the Father. What can I do? Amen. People showing up this morning in intercessory prayer to pray for the service because if God doesn't do something in this place, nothing's going to happen. Don't look to me as if I'm going to do it by because I'm whatever. It's like, it's got to be God. This revival is going to be all him. He gets all the glory. But get used to moving out of your comfort zone. If you can't even kneel at the altar and say, I give you my heart, I give you my life, I give you, if you can't lift up your hand, hands and worship God and give him glory, do your name. If you can't do that, just do the simple things. And then God is going to do this immediately, the suddenlies the supernatural, the healings, the deliverances. And guess what? You're going to be as surprised as ever. Remember how surprised we were when people got delivered of demons and, and they were coming out of people? It was like, wow, that was God. What are we doing here? We're just standing here. We're just doing what God said. And if he says lay hands on the sick, we're going to do it. And God's been just reminding me lately we did, we anointed with oil uh, on Tuesday. It's like, okay, so don't leave, those, don't leave those important details out. Is any among you sick? Let him call the elders of the church. Let them pray for him, anointing them with oil. And the prayer of faith will raise them up. And it's like, why does God do that? Oh, do you really need oil? That's, what, that's how religion sounds. Do we really have to lay hands like we don't do that anymore? Well, guess what? It's not going to work because you're not willing to do things God's way. Amen? So just take big steps of faith just on purpose. Amen? Just take big steps of faith, and you're just going to feel like your body's going, well, this is kind of ridiculous. Last few times I went forward, nothing really happened. Yes, it did. God saw you. He's circumcising your heart. He's changing your heart. When you just come and say, I surrender, well, I didn't feel anything. Well, when on earth was that what was God was asking, right? It's like, I'm just coming, Lord, out of obedience. Here I am. What I, who I am and who I ain't. 
Amen. So come on up, praise team. And if you didn't want to come forward before, maybe you can have another chance. Amen. Until you get so used to it and such a delight that you just praise the Lord. You just, your flesh, amen. I'm telling you, God is going to use this girl in such a powerful way, already is. Yeah, because you're just so eager. And that is so beautiful to Jesus. It is. It's just beautiful. And it's beautiful to me. I see faith when I see humility is so beautiful. Humility and surrender has a fragrance in heaven. When our prayers arise like incense, it's, it's just coming. Just as I am, Lord. Amen. Come on. Let's expect something supernatural. Maybe today's the day you get healed of that ache or the, the, that ache and pain that you got in your knees or something. Maybe today's the day. Amen. Amen. So it is the day. So why don't you just go and anoint your sister with oil and let's expect a miracle. Amen. Hallelujah. Start praying for each other. Don't just sit there. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Thank you. Yeah.